Hey friends, welcome back. It's Sound Guy Barry, and I want you to sound great. Do you, do you hear that? I, well, I want me to sound great too, so l let me fix this. One, one quick second. Check, check, check. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so in this video, I want to explain a quick tip that you can implement on your PA system, or you probably can implement on your PA system, that most of the big operators always pay attention to in order to get cleaner, clearer, tighter live sound. But yet, I see that most small bands and most smaller sound operators don't pay attention to this factor. And it's so easy to implement, and it can help a lot. Now, you've probably had the experience where, as a sound guy or eh, maybe as a band member, you've had the sound engineer come up to the band on stage and say, guys, guys, we, we got we got to bring the level down a little bit. We, you're just killing me out here. It's really challenging to mix the band when you've got a lot of sound coming directly off the stage. Uh, obviously, you have the issue of just straight up level, where you've got a guitar player or some other instrument on stage that's much louder than you would normally put them in the mix. And then you have the choice of either just letting it roll and having a really out of balance show, or you try to lift up the rest of the band to wrap it around that instrument so that things are in balance. The other issues you have, of course, are that um, as a sound engineer, if a lot of stage sound is coming directly from the stage to the audience, you don't have control over the equalization or the dynamics of that sound. And so it makes it a little harder to just blend the spectrum of that instrument into the rest of the band. You just don't have control. And finally, if there's an instrument on stage that's making a lot of direct sound coming out to the audience, most often that's in a pretty narrow beam width. And so the middle of the audience might be getting melted by that instrument, whereas the folks off to the side aren't getting anywhere near as strong of a a component of that instrument as they would if they were sitting in the center. And you have to do a compromise mix for the most of the audience so that they get some of that instrument without getting too much, hopefully. And that's a little challenging. Whereas if the instruments were all coming through the loudspeaker systems from the PA, you get a much broader coverage across the audience and everybody gets a good show. It's not a compromise no matter wherever you're sitting. So it's really challenging when you have loud instruments on stage to produce a good sounding show. But no matter how loud your stage volume is, even if it's pretty moderate, there's going to be some element of the sounds from the instrument on stage coming forward and blending with the sounds coming out of the PA system. And this is an issue because of time and distance and the speed of sound. And it's something that we actually can do something about. And so I'm gonna scratch out a quick little stage plot for you and we'll break this down. Stick around. All right guys, so we have a really simple stage plot here. And uh, we have the audience out here. We've got your loudspeakers right there. Got a drum kit and a guitar amp and a bass amp and a couple vocals and off of the drum kit, we have a snare drum. The snare drum has a microphone, which is a cable that goes over to your mixer. And then your mixer goes into some processing, which then goes into power amplifiers, which drives the loudspeaker. Now, of course, this processing may be built right into your mixer, and the amps may be built into your speakers. Doesn't really matter. As soon as the drummer hits the snare drum, that's going to impart a signal into the microphone which is going to run down this cable at the speed of light, or the speed of electricity, into your mixer. There might be a slight time delay in the processing in the mixer, but it'll be pretty small. And same thing with its processing, and almost instantaneously, this signal will pass through the chain here and out the loudspeakers to the audience. Meanwhile, the acoustic sound from him smacking that snare drum is going to also go out to the audience. But the acoustical signal, the actual sound from the snare drum, moves far slower than the electrical signal that goes through the processing and out the loudspeakers. And so this will move at about 1100 feet per second. In other words, it takes approximately one millisecond per foot to move from the drum kit 
to the audience. And of course the sound, uh, the speed of the sound coming out of these loudspeakers is exactly the same as this is. That's the speed of sound in air. And of course the speed of sound in air varies a little bit depending upon barometric pressure and the temperature of the environment, but it's about 1100 feet per second or 0.9 milliseconds per foot. We can call it one millisecond per foot. And one millisecond is therefore one one thousandth of a second. And so what's going to happen is that the signal that's picked up by the microphone goes out the loudspeakers immediately. But the actual sound coming off of the drum has to catch up to that. And so the audience is going to hear the signal out of the speakers first, and then they're going to hear the signal from the drums second. So it'll almost be like a little tiny echo where they hear this one first and then they hear it again acoustically off the drums just a fraction of a second later. So what's the solution to this? The solution is to insert a delay in this chain right here so that the signal that goes through the mixer board gets delayed before it gets sent out to the speakers so that it gets the electrical signal in time with the acoustical signal coming off of the drums. And to figure out that delay, it's really pretty simple. It's approximately one millisecond per foot. And so we can just measure the distance from the snare drum to the loudspeakers right there. And let's say that's 10 feet. And so that would be about 10 milliseconds. And so all we need to do is to dial in this delay at that point. So we delay our electrical signal coming out of the loudspeaker system so that it matches the acoustical signal coming off the stage. And that way the sounds on the stage will much better blend with the sounds that come out of your loudspeaker system and the band will sound more clean and clear and distinct. Now, how you insert this delay into your PA system, there's a number of different ways of doing that. You could um, insert a delay processor between your amplifiers and your mixer, but a lot of digital mixers have these features built right in. You might also have the feature for adding delay at the amplifier level. So if you have a power amplifier that has digital signal processing in it, this is likely one of the choices that you have. If you have a processor for your loudspeakers like for example, a DBX drive rack or something similar to that, you have this ability to insert a delay in the chain. Or you can probably do it with your digital mixer. So if you're using a Behringer X32 or a Midas M32, I'll uh, demonstrate how you can get to those pages and uh, make that delay adjustment. Okay, so here's the iPad mixing app for the Behringer X32 mixer. And of course, if you're using a digital mixer, that's not an X32 or an M32. There's probably the same feature on your board, but probably on a different screen. If you were using the iPad app, it's pretty simple. What we want to do is we want to add a small delay to our left and right main loudspeaker feeds. And so to do that, we would go to the routing page where we can adjust the outputs. And we would choose the outputs that are driving our left and right loudspeaker systems and in my case those happen to be output 7 and 8 so I'll just tag output 7 and you see when I get to output 7's properties there's a place here where you can insert delay and so all we do is we say we don't turn on the delay and then we dial up the amount of delay as necessary to uh, cover the distance from the back line of our stage out to the line where our PA loudspeakers are and this is kind of a neat application in that it actually measures the amount of feet for you so you don't have to do any complicated math. And so just dial up the correct amount of delay between I would say usually your snare drum to the front of the stage where your house loudspeakers are and just dial up that amount of feet on your left and your right output buses that go to those main loudspeakers and this should help get your system in sync with the backline instruments. Now you'll notice that if you go to your channels, each of the input channels 
also has a option for adding a delay right here. But this is not where you want to insert delay because if you insert the delay on the channel level, that will insert the delay at the beginning of this signal chain. And um, so that would impact things such as your stage monitors as well as your mains. And you do not want to put delay onto a vocalist channel if you want them to sing very well. They could um, become quite upset with you if you do that. And so this is not the place to do it. You don't want to add delay onto each individual instrument that you're mixing in. You want to add it onto the final bus in order to align the, the back line with the um, PA loudspeakers out in front of the stage. Now, of course, if you're using a different digital mixer, your screens will be different, but you should have the same features. If you're using something like a DBX drive rack or some other processing, or you have DSP processing in your amplifiers, you want to make the adjustment at that point. So there's a really quick tip for you for better live band sound, is add approximately one millisecond of delay for each foot from your instrument backline on the stage to the front of your PA loudspeakers to help get the sounds coming directly from your instruments versus those that are being amplified and pushed out the loudspeakers to arrive at the same time to the audience so they're more in sync and clear and more distinct. It'll improve your live show, and it's a super easy thing to just enable and dial up on your PA system and uh, should help your sound. So I hope you found that useful, and I hope you enjoy the channel, and I would suggest and appreciate if you would uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, click the like button down there below if you like the video, and hit that bell notification so that YouTube will let you know about future content when it comes down. I appreciate you sticking around, folks, and I hope to see you again soon on another episode of Sound Advice. My name is Barry. I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis and St. Paul Twin Cities area. And if you have a question about sound, need some advice, need some help, I'd love to help you out. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll catch you again.